Time to get crazy. It's NCAA tournament time. Ready for some March Madness is college hockey on the menu today from Colorado. Welcome to the Loveland Regional as our first game today is Michigan Tech versus Minnesota Duluth. Let's take a peek at that bracket. Michigan Tech, first time in the tournament since 2018. Minnesota Duluth, their 15th appearance. It seems like they're in this dance every year. It's great to be paired up with Paul Capanigri. I'm Dan Kelly. Welcome to Colorado. Looking forward to a wonderful day of college hockey. Cappy, you were fortunate enough to play in two national tournaments. When you look at the matchups today, what intrigues you? Uh, the utmost confidence that these teams have. Talking to them yesterday, they all think they're the favorite out here, which I love seeing that, but only one's going to come out. Brian Hallinan for Michigan Tech. Fair to say he's got a wee bit intensity. I love his intensity, but he also made me laugh. I love that. He's got 21 goals on the season. He drives the bus for the Huskies. They're going to need him to have another big game today. And then Wyatt Kaiser for the Bulldogs is an elite defender in the words of Scott Sandel, the head coach of the Bulldogs. Going to need him and his transition play to elevate this offense. The Bulldogs be successful today. Let's meet the goaltenders. Ryan Fanti, the six foot three junior. He's as big as a Rocky Mountain between the pipes for Minnesota Duluth. At the other end, Blake Pietela, the junior, the Michigan native. He's a little smaller, five foot 11, Blake Pietela, but that's the goaltending matchup. Let's see who wants to go to the frozen four in Boston. Time to play a little hockey this afternoon in Colorado. White sweaters for the Bulldogs of Minnesota Duluth. And it's Duluth controlling early. Rail will push it ahead for Anderson and knock it in. Galloping into the four check. Pat down there. Now Michigan Tech. Hallinan, one of their danger men. Parentino. Puts it in front, but there to skate it away is Roth. This is Anderson. Go, 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 go. Tipped in by Jacques. Back to pick it up for Michigan Tech. Is Light up the boards. Just chopped away there by Kaiser. Now tentatively over the line. Michigan Tech, their first shot on goal. Bobbled there by Fanti, but he is able to deal with it. And this guy is a, a treasure. <laughs> Joe Shawn, he introduced himself yesterday as Brad Pitt when we had a chance to talk with him, but uh, he's unique and blunt and at times hilarious. Started us off with a lie. <laughs> a great guy, loved his energy and his demeanor. I think his team really shows that when you watch them in play. From the faceoff, Michigan Tech controlling. Sirteski, twisting and turning. Just took a deflection off a stick. It's Biondi across the line. Gallatin sneaking in deep. And Michigan's Tech's Brett Thorne up the boards and out. Russell begins the breakout. Low height, the interception, and the first save there for Pietela. And the rebound is ripped wide. Now Minnesota Duluth starting to warm up. Kaiser floats it wide, jammed in front. And a good keep in. On the point by Duluth. Great shift from the fourth line here. All coming from a turnover from the deep end by Michigan Tech and everything from this off of that. The Bulldogs are getting an offensive end. As I 
said, the fourth line with a great first shift to the game. Pretty simple play, trying to go up the middle. Plevin with the low height with the shot, gets it on Plevin with the rebound, and then from there, Loney and them, they play a nice shift, get a couple more chances. Love to see a fourth line first shift of the game, get those jitters out, solid play by Duluth. Loney wins it back, and Anderson will slide it down low. Gilling there, trying to cut off the pass there, and he does. Second effort, though, and Parentino trying to clear it. Good whistle here, still in the first three minutes. Minnesota Duluth, there's a well-recognized face, three-time national champion, Scott Sandlin, in his 22nd season guiding these Bulldogs. Probably likes his team start here in the first three minutes. Anderson will knock it in deep. It's a bit of a experience versus inexperience matchup, right, Cappy? Yeah, you got to see. Duluth looks comfortable right away. Tech did get a, play, a chance early, but are they going to be a little cautious early on, not want to make mistakes? That's what I'm looking for early on from them. And can the Bulldogs kind of take advantage of that maybe cautious play early on? First penalty of the game. Duluth's going to go on the power play. I want to say, I think he got both. I think he got a slash there. Late on Goats. After the original call, as the referees are talking about it now a little bit. Maybe have a little more of a discussion. I think maybe for the hit, they're going to take a look at the hit, see if that was a little more. I mean, this would be huge. That was Allen in there with the hit. Talking about a guy that if he gets five in a game, that would just be a huge loss for the Huskies. Paid a price to get that puck in deep. Yeah, this is huge because Hallinan gets the original penalty, Dan. And then as the play went on, it gets went for the slash. As we look at it here, a little from behind, man, that's tough. A little away from board. That was on Kaiser. That's kind of who we, we had uh, highlighted before that matchup as the referees now are taking a look at that play. It was, this would be a devastating loss for the Huskies as their goal scoring leader is kind of nervously waiting. I mean, he's two hits. It's crazy. He's sitting there two feet away waiting for his fate as the referees look over this play. But this is a huge moment. I mean, we're not even four minutes into this hockey game and a crucial call here coming. Yeah, he is their even strength assassin, Brian Hallinan. 18 even strength points leading the nation. And there's a concern, Brian Hallinan, the engineering major awaiting his fate. Yeah, coach. Sean looks very nervous on the bench. This is, this is a huge moment. <laughs> like I said, this is just wild. As he moves the puck, Kaiser gets rid of the puck. And is that the referee from, from the center ice first had called it? And this is a huge moment because if this is a major, I believe that would be a game. It's one, it's given a five-minute power play, but also could be the end of the game for what you just said, the nation's leading score, five on five. Looking to see if this is going to be a five-minute major boarding penalty to Brian Hallinan for Michigan Tech. Yeah, and I, you know, this is a, I think they're doing a just by looking at it for a long time. It looks like they are done. Headsets are coming off, and we're going to get a, a call here. Five-minute major, and he's out of this hockey game. Not the script that Michigan Tech wanted to see here in the opening period. His Goats picking up a slashing minor as well. Yeah, later in the play, in the corner, Goats slash the stick. 
Michigan Tech will be four on four for two minutes. And then the Bulldogs will get a three minute power play after the four on four right now. Four on four for the two minutes and that'll be a three minute power play. And that will last throughout. They'll get a full three minutes of power play time booth no matter how many goals they score up in five minutes. Michiak rummaging along the boards for Michigan Tech, but it's Kaiser now taking back over for Minnesota Duluth. Gallatin, little exchange at center, loses it, but there is Kaiser to reclaim. It's Gilling, long pass at center. Leip had his man wrapped up. Kaiser, good defensive stance. And it's Gilling to Roth. Chopping away there is Gilling. And Anderson helps Minnesota Duluth maintain possession. Anderson just waiting for the line change to complete. Still in the first five minutes here. Minnesota Duluth, and then 65 seconds will begin a three minute power play. Kate's nosing around on the four check. Kate steals. Kate's looking to center it. Had Jacques in front. Is this duo, du duo doing a good job? Trapping Michigan Tech. Anderson fires. That's off a leg and wide. 40 seconds away from a power play beginning. Anderson, the low shot. Pietala the save, rebound, Jacques slides it wide. Great shift here from Minnesota Duluth. It looks like they're on the power play already. Kate's holding in. And that, that power play will begin in 20 seconds. Just stalling a little bit. Sawyer now begins the breakout for the Huskies. Goat standing up in the penalty box. He's coming up now. The loose power play is underway. Here on the pickup is Owen Gallatin, the fine freshman defenseman, letting the second wave shock carry it in across the line. Jock now over skates it. Biondi kicks it back to the point. This is Gallatin. Gallatin moves it around. Connor Kelly tipped wide there by Biondi. And a big clear from Michigan Tech. Clear there by Thorne. Michigan Tech, the number four penalty kill in the country. Special teams has been a huge part of their success this year. Roth will take it. Bender. He's had a hot stick here in the second half. Bender. Down to Roth. Bender. He thought someone was behind him. With that little drop pass, Kaiser hustling to keep it in. And he gets a little help from Cates to Kaiser. Straight away. Electing not to shoot. Pietala, the save and the rebound. Knocked away, but not completely out of trouble. Cates, one-timer there. Pietala, the save on Gilling, and Tech will clear it. Bender now again enters the zone with speed. That pass was rejected, and Michigan Tech will send that puck down the ice. Nothing more important in your penalty kill than your goaltender. Pietala with some great saves on Cates, a couple, and then the third chance. Good stuff from the junior netminder. Gallatin showing off his edge work. Dominic James in across the line. Gallatin trying to punch that puck down low. Just under a minute remaining in the power play. So far, so good for Michigan Tech on the penalty kill. Really good at pressuring, keeping their guys, not giving up the blue line, making it difficult for the Blue Dogs to enter the zone. James careening his way in across the line. Biondi sends it wide there with the wrist shot. Olsen picks it up. Back to Gallatin. That changed directions off of a deflection. And the Huskies will whip it down the ice. Wow, what beat one defender that time after the pressure. Biondi just missed the top corner. Olsen, tail end of the power play here. 
Down to Biondi. He scored a big goal last weekend. Sanderson perks there on the left point. The little snapshot. And that's chested down by Russell. And it's wedged down the ice by Michigan Tech. Power play is over. Three shots on target during that power play for Minnesota Duluth. Pietala will hold on to that puck for a face-off. So a failed power play. Pietala and Michigan Tech so far looking pretty good here versus Minnesota Duluth. The NCAA Hockey Championship is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Brian Hallinan kicked out of this game. Five-minute major. His team defended well on the penalty kill. I mean, a good reaction. I mean, they've got to be a little stunned here. Your coaching staff. I mean, when you're putting a game plan together, a guy that's going to play over 20 minutes is, is one of your power play guys. He's a 21-goal scorer. You know, their next highest is 13. So, you know, I, I think it's almost good that they had that penalty kill. They got it done. They can kind of regroup. Who's going to be a guy? Right now, it's Soretsky has moved up to that spot on that top line here with Bliss and Peritino. So we'll see what happens. But good reaction by getting that penalty kill done. I thought Duluth had some good chances, too. So good all around first five, six minutes here in this game. Water out. Spins it down low. It's Casey Gilling. It's off the side of the pad of Pietala. Anderson. He's been busy, number three there, back on the blue line for the Bulldogs. There's Roth, hand pass is why we hear the whistle. Almost halfway through this opening period from Loveland, Colorado. Yeah, this group out here, you mentioned Anderson and his D partner, Rail, over 350 career college hockey games between the two. Just unbelievable. Fifth year guys, they wanted to come back. You can hear that a lot, I think there's bunch of guys there's five grad guys they wanted to come back and almost praying hope like Kobe Ross said it best was praying to get another shot to put that Bulldog jersey on for another year and they want to take every chance every they want to take advantage of every moment of it. You're accustomed to seeing a lot of blue liners leave Minnesota Duluth and become big NHL stars no not necessarily stars amongst this group but real solid defensemen back there Ashbrook trying to jump his way over the defender there. This Bender at center runs into Mosley. Nardella loses it. And the Bulldogs from their own side of center slide it down the ice so we hear a whistle for an icy. Good back pressure from Bender then he turns it over but then he retrieves it again. I think he's trying to find a stick there. His teammate ends up icing the puck. Face off will come back down to Fanti's left. Over nine minutes for Michigan Tech without a shot on goal. Wonder if that one will count. It's close. Biondi up the boards. He finds Olsen. And Bender. Just Give it the little soft slide so there's no icing, but he can get to the bench for a change. Tipped in by Tech off the stick of Mosley. Gallatin back to collect. Michigan Tech has other ideas. But it's recaptured here by Olsen. Gallatin. Biondi looking for that puck. Olsen finds it. There's Biondi, too well checked. Not a lot of room out there in this first period for both teams. Good pitch up the wall by Caro, the transfer in this year. He's a guy that a lot of the players highlighted. Didn't get a ton of chance at Boston College, but has come into Michigan Tech and become one of their top pair with Sawyer. Pride loose, Misiak will play it out to center now. There's Rail spinning. 
Anderson reaching for it. Rail back there to protect the blue line for Duluth. Makes the long pass. They jostle along the boards. Anderson trying to eliminate his man, and that's going to be an interference penalty on Anderson. Good call. We'll take a break. Huskies getting ready for a little power play work when we come back. See how important Brian Hallinan is to Michigan Tech and how they're going to miss him this afternoon dearly. The boarding major three minutes into this first period. Yeah, now that's the story of the early part of this game. Brian Hallinan hits Wyatt Kaiser from behind. It's a no-no in college hockey these days. And then I, clearly you can understand the frustration. Ryan Hallen goes to the bye. I mean, this is this quite frankly could be his career depending on how this game plays out. So I don't blame his frustration there. It's definitely not the way you want to go out as a senior. So see if his team can pick him up here. They have a power play. I mentioned their penalty kill earlier. They had the number two power play in the country this year. And, you know, th this unit will not change because Hallinan was not on the Bliss unit so we'll see what happens on the next one but right now the bliss unit on to this number two in the country power play bliss won the face off it's causing this little spell of possession good keep in by sawyer but he kept it in with his hand so it's a hand pass the ncaa frozen four is heading to boston massachusetts the action begins on Thursday, April 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on the 2022 NCAA Frozen Four, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Michigan Tech right now in early stages of a power play. Pietela carries over the line. Stick there by rail. Deflection goes out. That's going to be a huge emphasis for the Bulldogs today, getting their sticks in lanes against this lethal Michigan Tech power play. Talking to Trent Bliss, he's like, the thing that makes them so difficult is they don't stay stationary. They don't stay in one spot. They move around. They keep it unpredictable in the zone. So it's going to be imperative for Duluth to communicate in their zone. Sticks in lanes. Another one there. By Latteru, that's going to be big for them. Yeah. Cappy, as an Ohio State Buckeye, did you ever play in the state of Colorado and deal with a thing called altitude? Uh, you know what? I didn't. The highest I ever played in altitude was in Lake Placid, New York, and that felt a little bit. So that's, that is something to kind of keep an eye on today in this game as we get later into the game with fatigue. And then obviously tonight, you'd like to think Denver is going to have a little upper hand on the red uh, – the – UMass Lowell team that has not experienced the elevation to the way Denver has day in and day out. Plus, there's going to be a lot of University of Denver supporters here this evening. Campus is just a little over an hour away. Still some time left on the power play here for Michigan Tech. Soretsky loses it. Little chip there. Here comes Olsen. Dropping to James, back to Olsen. Ooh, wanted to go back to James, but the play just didn't work out. Michigan Tech now in across the line with some speed, but Olsen there, great dogged determination on the back check. It's Pietela, his shot there, deflects off a leg and back out to center. Single digits left on this power play. Some nice moves by Sawyer. On the point it goes. Anderson is out of the box. Changing directions. Fanti a big save there. He hasn't seen a lot of rubber here in the opening 20 minutes. Zero shots on that power play for Michigan Tech. Yeah, and like you said, they had that first shot of the game. Then Duluth went on a spree there. Right now the shots are 10 to 2. Good reaction from Fanti with the leg on just the third shot he's seen all day. A little over six minutes to go in the opening period. And they wave off icing at the last second. 
Clevin down there. The four check. The defensive work from Russell for Michigan Tech, and he's got a few friends along for the ride as well. Russell, head up, across center. Kobe Roth. A small forward, wearing number 10 for Minnesota Duluth, now flies in on the four check. It's Mosley moving it out. A little stumble there from Nardella, but has a lot of support around him. Yeah, got tripped up by his own teammate, Trenton Bliss, as he had some good speed coming through the neutral zone. Unfortunately, Bliss caught a blade. And... Come on, Trenton, you can't do that. We had a chance to talk to that personable young man yesterday. Roth, the steal, scores! <laughs> Minnesota Duluth started. One of those super seniors with a great play. He caused a turnover on the wall. Good play. He gets that turnover and gets uses that screen in front of him. I think it was Carroll that tried to block it, almost act like a goalie, but made a little tip on the puck. Made the direction because it wasn't a very difficult, hard shot by Rob. Just trying to get it to the net, he puts it there. Goes off Rob's leg, possibly. It's past Pietala and a huge goal. Just over five minutes remaining in the first period. Toby Rob puts the Bulldogs on the board. Especially stings even more knowing that Michigan Tech is without one of their best players, Brian Hallinan, for the rest of the game. As you see, 15th goal of the season. It's confirmed a good goal for Kobe Roth. Bulldogs go! Scoring on the play, number 10, Kobe Roth! Unassisted goal. Piedela wires it up the boards. Here's his brother. Quick shot. Fanti able to direct it aside with his pad in the high shot. He catches puck so well and he is able to snare that one. Biondi, the push down at center. Here comes Olsen. Nice little move. Just getting the stick on it there with Mishiak to disrupt him. Kaiser, the Chicago Blackhawk. Blackhawk draft choice. Rifles that pass through the crease. Great back check by Kaiser. Gets up in the play then is the first one back to... Retrieve the puck for the Bulldogs. Great speed from number five. Michigan Tech getting out shot 10-2 in this opening period. Now looking for some more. Kaiser bumped on the four check. It's Logan Ganey there waiting for a loose puck, but it's intercepted. Goats begins the breakout. There's Bender around the puck. Cates as well. Now Anderson the shot. Rebound in front. Pietela the save. It was Jacques in front. Anderson. Good keep in. That's off of Michigan Tech player's glove. Down to Olsen behind the goal. Bender stands in front. Awaiting the puck's arrival. It comes, but... Just couldn't get to it. Anderson creeps, fires off of Pietela. Rail keeping the pressure on. Bouncing puck. Good keep in there by Rail. Over to his partner, Anderson. Tech needs a clear, and they'll get an open lane. Rail closes down his man and forces a dump in. Good pressure from the Bulldogs. Great leg save from... Pietela keeping his team within arm's length. Loney tearing in after it on the four check. <laughs> the referee has to jump out of the way. That's a hard four check. Kobe Roth and the Bulldogs land the first dart this afternoon. A little over two minutes remaining 
in this period. So it was a decision by the officials, was it an icing or not? Now in for a closer look, Michigan Tech celebrating like they scored. It didn't go in, Soretsky thought he had scored on that wraparound. Close call, just their third shot of the afternoon, although it wasn't a shot. It was almost a shot attempt. Under two minutes to go in the period. Light back for Michigan Tech. Tipped in, Pietela, right in front, tipped. Oh, and that was a vicious collision into the inboards. Mishiak, nice to see him get up. Penalty upcoming. It's going to be on Minnesota Duluth. First power play here for Tech late in the period. Make that their second power play of the period. They'll go for the equalizer here as things starting to heat up here in Colorado. Having some fun here in Loveland, Colorado as they review this. Lots going on. Great. Wow. I, I don't blame Soretsky thinking. I think he thought the puck was going to be tucked into that empty side, but what happened, it looked like it just went straight across the crease, and Fanti almost luckily was late coming across and kicked it across back and not into his own net. So almost, you could almost say he was a little lucky being late on the play. Uh, close call there, but again, power play here, critical for Michigan Tech to get one here late in the period, kind of start the second period scratch, like the guy said in studio, would be critical. And kind of, you know, Losing your top player, I think it would, they'd kind of be able to take a breath and kind of reset their minds and get things right. 90 seconds to go in the period. Tech here on the power play. Somebody score on Fanti. Thorn gets it back. Thorn walks in. And he didn't glove that puck cleanly. Good defensive play. Down on his knees. Low height. We'll clear it. Good play. A little lucky. Carroll wasn't able to tow that puck, keep control, but he might have had a chance. Or a guy on the back door. Good break for the Bulldogs as they clear. One minute remaining in the first period. Cates with the steal. 50 seconds to go. Piedela, Michigan Tech. In the midst of a late period power play. You play right there by Noah Case gets you excited if you're a Philadelphia Flyers fan. A draft pick of them does more than score, is great on the penalty kill. Does a little bit of everything. He's a captain leader. It's Pietala back on the point it goes. Got the drive. And that's kicked aside. Good shot there by Goats. You know, I think Fancy though. He's going to see it. He's going to stop it. I think that's the rhythm he is in right now. He leaves a rebound there, but if you look, there's three Bulldogs there to help him get that puck out of play. And then right after that was when Caro got that puck, wasn't able to hold on to it, and the Bulldogs clear. But Fanti has been on fire. There's over 146 minutes coming into this game without letting in a goal. Shutouts in both games in the NCHC final. Yedela. To Goats. Down low. There's Rail for Minnesota Duluth trying to clear it. Pietel in front. Had a quick half chance. Fanti melts that puck down for a faceoff. Yeah, it looked like Rail had the hard rim around, decided to go back the other way, turn it over, and under five seconds to go. What an opportunity there is Pietel always sniffing around the net. Pietel take this faceoff. Trying to get a last second shot of the way there was Goats. That is the end of $300 bill, a broken stick. But it was the stick of Kobe Roth that scored the only goal of the period. And those Bulldogs off to a great start. End of the period here in Loveland. Now let's send it to the crew in the studio for the NCAA Hockey Intermission Report. All right, Dan. Welcome back to Loveland, Colorado. About to start the second period of this regional semifinal. The big story is Michigan Tech is going to start off this second. 
brief power play, 24 seconds remain, but without one of their best players, you know the old line, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Well, the Huskies got punched in the mouth three minutes in, losing a Hobie Baker finalist in Brian Hallinan. Yeah, no malice intent there, just trying to finish the play, but I think that always is a lesson learned at any level of hockey. You see that number on the back of a guy, you can't finish your check. I'm sure he was juiced up first couple shifts of the game, trying to get into it with a hit. Just a little too much there from behind, and he is out. The Hobie Baker finalist. Michigan Tech will not have the rest of this hockey game. Michigan Tech back in the tournament for the first time since 2018. The least penalized team in the CCHA, and they're Head coach Joe Sean just saying, well, look at the school they play for. It's kind of like having Harvard kids, so they can play some disciplined hockey. Here, a little power play time. 15 seconds remain. The Huskies man advantage. Anderson takes over for Duluth and pounds it down the ice. They clear there. Negate the rest of this power play. Kobe Roth had the first period goal. For Minnesota Duluth. Fanti directs that to the wall. Minnesota Duluth is returned to full strength. A little forearm shiver there. It was Jacques there with that forearm and covering up. Darian Goats, brother of Michigan Tech defenseman. Eric Goats, brother on brother action. Pretty cool to see that. Talk to Eric about it yesterday. He's okay. He finally has come to the oh, being okay with the fact that his brother has got a few inches in height on him. He said he's got a little more of an offensive touch he's on the power play for Michigan Tech, but great seeing brothers going against each other in an NCAA tournament. Another whistle here. Minnesota Duluth, they've won four straight. Playoff game, so much experience, 13 seniors. They poised to win another national championship this year under Scott Sandler. Cates along the boards. Cates takes it. That was elevated off a stick. Jesse Jacques leaves it in the near corner. Problem then, there's Mosley. He's stapled to the boards. Cates rummaging along the boards now, finally picks it up, but promptly loses it. And it's shot out of play. Offensive. Offensive zone face-off for the Kobe Roth line. Scored that goal early on in the game to give the Duluth Bulldogs a 1-0 lead. Nardella back to collect for Michigan Tech here in the first two minutes of the second period. So they trail 1-0. Nardella diving for that, just couldn't Connect with the puck. Ladder route. At center, that's tucked in by Kobe Roth. Gilling on the four check, but Michigan Tech finds the right exit. Fanti out to play it. Wedges it up the boards on his backhand. Huskies will hold in. Thorn down low. Richards on the point. Bobbled there by Goats momentarily. In front, Fanti the stop. Michigan Tech trying to create here. And they slide it through everybody there. Sending Goats back. Yeah, Ganey with a lot of time behind the net. Could have had a cup of coffee. Tried to wait it out. Find a guy in the slot. Unable to find anyone, and including the defense. That Sends it all the way back down and puts the Bulldogs back in the offensive zone. Dominic James, a little out of control there along the left wing boards, takes a tumble. This is Biondi on the four check. Now has some company with Olsen as well, but it's Michigan Tech. 
out at center and offside. Misiak and the Huskies. Officially 13 shots on goal for Minnesota Duluth. Six for Michigan Tech. Michigan Tech needing to find a little more offense. Obviously, it's going to be a little more difficult without number 12. Cates and Bender. Ooh, big hit. Shock there. Putting down his man with authority, Colin Sawyer. And it's an icy. Ah, what a hit. By Jacques lining up, head down on Sawyer. Shoulder right into the chest. Get another look at it. Solid hit from Senior, another one of those 13 seniors for the Bulldog, Jesse Jocks, and I think we're gonna get a review, possibly. The horn goes off. Cappy, is that what the young hockey players call getting caught in the rails? You know, I think so. You're, you're trying to move around one guy, and you know, you, you get your head down, you get your head down to make sure you still have the puck, and then the next layer, and that's what. Duluth does, they layer in defense. And that's what we're looking at, another second hit that's being reviewed. I mean, this is happening a lot. Physical, physical game. I mean, we get a look here. The follow through is what concerns me if I'm a Duluth fan. Yeah, but but the, I, the biggest point is the contact first. If he makes contact with the chest before the head, because I think we got a little unlucky there as the referee skates right by as is the contact was being made on that angle. So that was a great angle to look at that play. But it looks like we're clear. Everything went for good. And they review efficiently, get on, get off, and we'll move on and get the puck back for a faceoff here. Kataroff will take it opposite Jacques for Minnesota Duluth. And Jacques was a man who had that big hit moments ago. Cates will slide it in. Bender in there first in the four check, but Michigan Tech has been breaking out cleanly here in the second period. Mosley, rink wide pass, that's tucked in by Nardella. They rule that puck is deflected, so no icy. Yeah, Roth unable to control that. Might add a two on one with Latteru, but wasn't able to correct. A little bouncing puck right at the blue line. Nardella. Ahead to Mosley, nice little move, cuts in, backhand shot, and Fanti hangs with him. Another drive, and that laser's put wide by Mosley. Michigan Tech all of a sudden looking a little dangerous. And Mosley with a couple slick plays, not known for his high offensive talent, only five goals on the year, but what a play going to his backhand. Fanti with a terrific save. Leip runs into a roadblock there. Ladder route for Minnesota Duluth along with Gilling. They jostle right in front of the Duluth bench. Squirts loose for Wyatt Kaiser and will fling it in. Second period, almost five minutes old. Minnesota Duluth nursing a 1-0 lead. Loney passes a little behind. Clevin does a good job to accept it. It's Michigan Tech along the left wing boards trying to clear it. Light back to gather it in. The forecheck bringing the heat from Minnesota Duluth and causing some issues. All three forwards down near that goal line, chopping away ferociously. And it's Goats. He gets decked. Michigan Tech looking for some offense. Trying to find it with Ryland Mosley going to the backhand. Big save by Rand Banting. Tonight, ESPN Hockey Night is in Raleigh for the Stars and Canes at 7 Eastern. The Flyers take on the Blues at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN+. Plus. 
And our ABC Saturday matinee has the Golden Knights hosting the Blackhawks in Vegas. That's a 3 Eastern noon Pacific start. And all the games are available on the ESPN app. Paul Kaepernick, you're pretty familiar with the Chicago Blackhawks, calling some games this year for the original six franchise. Rebuilding mode there. You have one of the guy right there, Connor Kelly, a seventh round pick prospect, along with Wyatt Kaiser. So a couple guys on this Duluth Bulldog defensive core in the mix for possible, you know, it's an opportunity as they rebuild. They're going to get young guys in there. Wyatt Kaiser with that elite defensive ability can look for some hope in the in the future as a Chicago Blackhawk and I'm sure they're hoping his development continues more hope back in Houghton Michigan watching the second period so far Michigan Tech out shooting Minnesota Duluth three nothing here in the middle stanza Noah Cates turns fires shock didn't get much off on that backhand shot as he was almost in too tight and surprised himself Cates tracks it down jock goes to the goal and Pietola snares it with the glove. Dan, I think any time you get the puck in front of the net and you have time and space like that, it's almost not a good thing because you're like, you're shocked first of all, and then you're so close like you said, he's got to try to make a quick move and he kind of lost the puck on his backhand. A nice play to get to the net. I still don't think they have a shot on goal because that went wide. Uh, but Pietola made a good, did a good job of being aggressive at that puck, making him make a quick play and he wasn't able to finish it off. Dominic James was kind of tripped there off that faceoff. As a result, loses it, but good keep him. Now James, the wrist shot off the blocker there of Pietela. The goal scorer for the Bulldogs. Roth operates down low. He'll kick it back to the point to Anderson. Roth. So crafty. And right now, unable to breathe there as Huskies all over him. They take it away. Gilling now. Great back check and showing his strength there with the stick, but now it's Bliss in across the line. Loses it to a back checking Ross. Ladder route by his lonesome as his teammates are changing. He'll shove it down low. Awaiting there is Dominic James. Swooping in is Quinn Olson. And it's pushed down the ice by Michigan Tech. Yeah, good play by Ladder, who kind of delay and let Olson and James get onto the ice. He gets off and James sandwiched by two Huskies. Michigan Tech will just fling it out to center. Nardella is there to redirect it in. A lot more possession from Minnesota Duluth. But creating some chances here, Michigan Tech in the second. Mosley was going to the goal, but Minnesota Duluth disrupts things defensively. Biondi ahead of the play. Through center, Dominic James sends it in deep. Olsen there on the four check, knocking bodies down. Twelve and a half minutes to go here in the second period. Good defensive stance there at the blue line by Duluth, and Biondi will slide it in. Now motoring across center, Logan Ganey. Play never materialized, and Minnesota Duluth attacking. Bad angle there, Pietala. Had the angle and the holes protected there. Back and forth we go. Low high. Spins it up the near boards. Helped ahead by Jacques. Fanti raises it up the boards. Noah Cates is there. And Cates will carry to center. Bender plays it back to his own defense. Slapping that stick was Noah Cates. Alerting those defensemen back there. Give the puck to number 21. There he is operating in the near corner. Goats from the point. Jock, short range there, Bender. And picking up the crumbs now, Michigan Tech. Pietala going for a little ride is Michiak. Goats back defensively for Duluth. That's Wyatt Kaiser. There's that Chicago Blackhawk draft choice we spoke of. Over the stick of Gilling. Ooh, potential too many men on the ice. Penalty there. Tech was caught changing. 
In the meantime, Bliss on the four check using his big body. But it's Roth beginning the breakout until a turnover. Michigan Tech trying to walk in. Parentino looked like he initially could have shot it. And that's Parentino's strength, they say, is he shoots the puck when you least expect it. Parentino there, number nine for Michigan Tech. Twice now they've had a little trouble there with changes. I think Bliss waited on that first one. They only had four on the ice on that first one. That second one, the guy was leg was half over the boards. And then if you're I'm Parentino, you're down a goal, you get that puck in the slot, you rip that on net, gotta get those chances. Create something here for the Huskies as Gluth is playing this game with the lead to a team. Trying to fly in here is Thorne. He's staved off nicely by Deleuze D. And picking up the pieces is Biondi. Winding up. Avoiding Huskies in the neutral zone. Off the stick of Olsen, so there's no danger of an icy nine and a half minutes to go in this second period. One nothing lead for the Bulldogs. As Mosley begins the breakout for Tech. This should be an icy, and it will be. The back pressure there. Dominic James, the speed and defense. Ooh. Albany Regent seeing what happened earlier today. Minnesota State knocking off Harvard 4-3. It will be 6.30 Eastern on Saturday. Also played 6 o'clock tonight before that. UND against UND. Notre Dame and North Dakota. I think that's ever happened in a regional before. The winner of that game will go to on to face Minnesota State. We'll be back right after this. Here's our NCAA Women's Championship Sweet 16 matchup for tomorrow. Number one seeded South Carolina takes on North Carolina on ESPN at 7 Eastern. And ESPN 2 has Ohio State, Texas. Then Maryland takes on the defending national champs Stanford on ESPN with Creighton and Iowa State on ESPN 2. All games are also available on the ESPN app. It's a lot of basketball. I guess that's why they call it March Madness. Nothing to get mad about, right? This is just a wonderful afternoon of hockey. I mean, this is the greatest time of the year in my book. March, the, play the playoffs are on the horizon in pro sports. You get all the college right now with basketball and hike hockey here. And it's, it's just great to be in this scenery right here. You got four teams here vying for that one spot in Boston. Things are going to be tight and tense. Fans are here enjoying it. It's great. Great atmosphere, great to be here. Just the opening course this afternoon. Tonight it's the University of Denver and UMass Lowell. A little over nine minutes to go in the middle period here from Colorado. Belligerent on the four check there is Jesse Jacques. Bender will help keep it in. There's Jacques. His pass is picked off by Pietela. Pietela leads the brigade. What a move. Pietela in. Fanti the save. Just keeps it out. Michigan Tech's best goal scoring chance of this game. And they've looked dangerous here in the second period. Batting that puck around now is Ashbrook. Finding the right exit. Minnesota Duluth. Bender for Jacques. Back to Bender down low. Waiting for teammates to arrive who are changing. Swooping in. Michigan Tech will take it and play it hard off the glass. They wave off a potential icing as that puck had a little backspin on it. Rail out at center to ladder route. Pass is intercepted, but it's recovered by Minnesota Duluth. Good stick there by Roth. Michigan Tech now foiled there right over the blue line. Anderson waits for the puck, spins it up the wall, kept in by Michigan Tech, but only for a moment. Lateru dropping to Roth, a slap shot, and that took a deflection out of play. 
make puck plays. This is after Pietlin made a great play in the D zone. A little toe drag on Kaiser. Banthi was going for the post. Luckily, he's able to still get it on his shoulder as he's reaching out. Gets him in the shoulder, goes over that. What a move by number 13. One of the guys, key as he, Brian Hallen and Hallen in out of the game. Yellow's one of those guys along with his brother and net. They're going to be huge keys as we get down the stretch of this game. And Ryan Fanti, the goaltender for Minnesota Duluth, has really calmed down his game this season. Much better positioning. So now saves are easier for him. Not that that last save was easy. Russell burrowed in behind his own goal before he makes the move for the breakout. It's to Paul Capanigri. I'm Dan Kelly. ESPN crew, it's so good to have you with us this afternoon. Michigan Tech now trying to maneuver it in front. Instead, it's Biondi going the other way. Biondi with Dominic James. James dropping to Biondi. Just too well checked to get a shot off. Well done by Colin Sawyer to break it up. Now he leads the charge the other way. Everybody back checking. There's Rail trying to clear it up to your boards. He'll give to Olsen. Tech is changing, so there's some open ice. Couple good rushes by the Huskies, but what Duluth does so well, they do not make a lot of mistakes. They get their second, third, fourth guys back. You have to take advantage of when they do make those rare mistakes. Low height, tears in after it on the four check. Clevin there as well. There's Anderson, like a statue, a stubborn one at that, at that blue line, trying to keep the puck in. And the puck is bouncing here late in the second period, it appears. Luke Lohite. Dropping to Loney. Maybe one too many passes. And now it's Michigan Tech. Life diving there at it. But Duluth has things taken care of and they'll send it down the ice. It's definitely something to watch as you mentioned. The pucks are getting a little choppy out there. Mishiak looking to break free. They work it around. That's drilled wide by Russell. Penalty up coming to Duluth. Extra attacker on here. Ashbrook in front. And a lot of hooking and holding going on. Finally we have a Whistle, and it's going to be a hooking call. Goats going to the box. Play gets that stick. Goats gets that stick under the armpit of Piedel. He's really elevated his game, created earlier. Now he draws the penalty in that number two ranked power play in the country going back to work is Goats' brother now. Eric will try to make his younger brother pay after Darian Goats gets the hooking penalty. Tech going on the power play. They're 0 for 2 this afternoon with the advantage. This afternoon or evening depending on what time zone you're in. Sawyer. Kicks up his skate to let that pass go through to Goats now. Kick back to Sawyer. The wrist shot didn't get through the congestion. Five minutes to go in the period. Sawyer. The Bliss down low it goes. Kataroff. Bliss along the boards. Working the puck around. Now getting the shots though here so far, Tech. Goats. Flicking it back. Bliss. Off a leg, never saw Fanti. Good stick by low height and gets the clear. Good job by the Bulldogs. I think Paratino had one crack at the rebound. Fanti makes a good play. Dangerous on all angles as Bliss told us they come at you from different spots. Not the same looking for, for the shots from the, the circles. They go down low, they'll get it up top to their shooters. 50 seconds to go on the power play for Tech. And another big clear. This one from Cates. One shot so far during this power play. 
for the Huskies. Caro launching it in. Speaking of launching, look at Fanti trying to launch it down the ice. I'm sure he's a little frustrated with himself, knowing that that faceoff's going to come back down into his end. Got a lot on it, but it went right into the penalty. Or went into the tech box. Used to be over here in this region, you could say there's some championship experience. Gophers were in this region last year. In the last 20 years, there's only been two teams with back-to-back -back national championships. University of Denver and University of Minnesota. And Duluth as well. There's Minnesota Duluth now fighting in front. Three twenty-five to go in the second period. Goes is out of the box. Michigan Tech's power play has expired. James on the forecheck. He's knocked down to the ice, but still has some fight left in him. He's gloved in by Ganey. Checking over his shoulder, Wyatt Kaiser to see who's coming. Bender flying down the near boards. Bender slides it right through the crease. Gets it right back. He's quickly eliminated. Bender back at it, though. Leip has him wrapped up, at least trying. Now scurrying to center, Michigan Tech. The dump, and now the chase. But it ends up on the stick of Minnesota Duluth. On the counter, Noah Cates dropping it off. A save there from Pietala. Approaching the final two minutes of the second period. Gloved down by Anderson. He's had a good game. Shoots it from a bad angle there. Not a problem for Pietala. Rail in from the point. Shot out of play. Pressure from the Bulldogs. They're getting pressure, but they're not putting themselves in dangerous spots to turn the puck over. You like to see that making good decisions on the wall. And Noah Cates dropping it to Lateru, puts it on net. Juicy rebound left there by Piatala, but Husky's able to get it out of the danger area. Olsen centers there for Biondi, but Tech will jump on you defensively. And they do so as Connor Kelly now launching the attack here for Minnesota Duluth. It's intercepted. Soretsky, one against three, so he elects to dump it in. Fanti. Use that backhand a lot on outlet passes. The Duluth goaltender. Yeah, you get your goalie to make good plays like that makes your breakout so much easier up and back in the offensive zone. Biondi heading north, heading right into the teeth of the defense there for Michigan Tech. Parentino flies over the line. Parentino drops it off for Bliss. He's getting physical down there. Picking up the pieces now. Dominic James at center. Safely across center, but not shot in very deep. Final minute of the second period. Ladder out. Swings it in with one hand. Rail. 40 seconds to go in the period. Russell for Michigan Tech. Knocking it in. Rail sends it across for Bender. Roth, the goal scorer for Minnesota Duluth now. Gives to Bender. Bender off the side of the goal. Michigan Tech, Michiak loses it, 15 seconds to go in the period. Jock, five seconds to go in the period. Jock turns, fires, Pietala got a pad to it. The follow for rip wide by rail. That is the end of the second period. And a 
scoreless second period here in Colorado. Those Bulldogs still have the slightest of edge. One nothing lead over Michigan Tech. We're going to see who wants to get to the Frozen Four real bad. One period of regulation left as we send you back to the ESPN studio after 40 minutes. All right, Dan Cap. Nothing better than single elimination hockey. Right now, it's Minnesota Duluth on top of the three seed. Michigan Tech one nothing. about to start the third period. Check out our bracket out here in Loveland, Colorado. We found out today that our game Saturday will be for Eastern, and the Albany game will be after us. But an Albany game before that tonight, of course. Our game a little later on as well. University of Denver taking on UMass Lowell this evening. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from Magnus Arena. So you know there's going to be a lot of Pioneer fans on hand watching University of Denver. There is Ryan Fanti, the NCHC Goalie of the Year. He's been the MVP all year and silenced a lot of critics. Got it's beloved by his teammates. Blake Pietela. We heard Trenton Bliss allude to it in that interview. They believe in their goalie. If they can get two, it's usually enough. Right now, being shut out by these Bulldogs in this all canine matchup. All important. First goal of those two, obviously. But you can sense it here, that next goal, whether it happens or not, it's going to be a huge one. Michigan Tech there, Parentino with the look from the left wing boards. Lateral, you see the record for those Bulldogs when they've got the lead after two periods, close to perfection. But they do have two blemishes. Lateral gives to Roth. Didn't like his option, so he hits the brakes. Down low it goes to Gilly. It's Bender there, but just getting outnumbered there by Huskies, and Michigan Tech, as a result, will clear it. Just underway here, the third period. The Bulldogs wearing the white sweaters. This is Connor Kelly through center. Loses it. Ashbrook now breaking in. Just couldn't really get a good shot away. Squirts in front. Back to the point it goes. It's Thorne holding in for the Huskies in front. Using the paddle of his goal stick, Fanti. Fans that one aside. Swooping in there is Ashbrook for Michigan Tech. You can see it. It took them a while to get their legs moving, but Michigan Tech now moving those legs a little more rapidly. Michiak. We'll slide it down low and go to the bench for a line change. Thorne keeps him trapped in the zone. This is Thorne. Walks, fires, tipped. Fanti the save. Rebound available. And it's just chopped wide. Michigan Tech. Best little spell, perhaps all game. Goats kicks it back to the point. Sending it wide now. Finally picked off by Olsen, but still can't get it out. You see the frustration from Olsen pushing down his man. Kataroth in front looking there. It was Mosley, but finally a chance for Duluth to get a breather. Coach Sean, no expression, but he's got to be pleased with his team start for the third period, dominating in the offensive zone. Connor Kelly made the turnover early for the Bulldogs. It led to that all that offensive zone time, but he did make a couple nice plays with his stick, including that last opportunity from Tech. Puts it up over into the netting, and now we'll have a faceoff to the left of Mr. Fanti. Coach Sean, a, a goaltender at Lake State and an engineering major. Coached Ryan Miller, Jr. back in the day. Ooh, quick opportunity there. Just breezing through the crease. Now looking to counter. Yep. Running into Wyatt Kaiser, and that disrupts the rush. And now we hear the whistle for an icing. The 
little tap dance through the crease. Wilson just had it just turned around. If he's in a shooting opportunity there, he's got a grade A chance. Just kind of twisted around into a turning back towards his own lane. If he's got his skates turned up, he may be able to go to his backhand there on the far side. Shots dead even, 19-19. Ryan Fanti, the Bulldogs goaltender, is getting close to a shutout streak of 190 minutes. Scooting through center is Russell. Swung towards the goal, but it didn't make it there. And Fanti uses his stick so well to protect the blue paint. This is Roth. Bodies rattling the boards. And it's Ganey clearing for Michigan Tech. Now swung in on the backhand. Piedela. A solo mission as his teammates were changing. Whistle stays silent. Piedela shoves it in front. Cover back for Minnesota Duluth as Roth helping defensively. Now it's Roth. Had three shots on target in this game and the only goal. Brushed up the boards by Fanti. Here comes Gilling with Roth. Gilling will swing it wide. Throws it towards the goal. Pietela making the stick stop. Roth down low. Leaves for Gilling. Bulldogs trying to add to their 1-0 lead. So they can breathe a little easier. Back to the point, Goats. Keeps it in the zone, not once, but twice. Puck exploded on him. He had Roth off to the side of the net, trying to get it to him. It's just a grenade off the end of his stick. A bouncing puck, but... Good job of keeping it in, like you said, after that. But would have had a great A chance down, to, down low for no! the 10. Bender for yep. Cates to wedge it in. There's Cates. Good stick lift there, but Michigan Tech still ends up with possession. Nick Nardella. Trenton Bliss now flying into the forecheck, but we hear a whistle for an icing and a few boos. You can hear Trenton Bliss, too, upset. He was looked like the first guy in on that puck. Well, the NCAA Frozen Four is heading to Boston, Massachusetts. The action begins on Thursday, April 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on the 2022 NCAA Frozen Four, visit NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Bulldogs won the faceoff, but it's Michigan Tech coming to center now, bringing it into the zone. Soretsky. Matt Anderson giving the Husky a rough ride into the glass. That's blocked by Bender. Dipping shot, bounding wide. Bender winding up in his own zone for the University of Minnesota Duluth. Five and a half minutes gone in this third period. It's Bender. Knew he was going to get hit, but he needed it and wanted to get that puck in deep, and he does so. Sawyer backpedaling. Has to watch it with Loney there loitering near the blue line. Again, it's Loney almost creating a turnover. Now this fourth line has been fantastic. Gaining some confidence from Coach Sandlin. Turnover, watch out in, shoots, scores! Johnny on the spot, Tyler Clevin. This fourth line I just pointed out, the whip on the breakout from Gold Sleeves. Clevin alone in front of the net, and he goes under the bar over Piedela's shoulder and gives the Bulldogs a 2 nothing lead. That fourth line, I said he'd, they'd earned the more trust from Coach Sandlin getting more ice time, and it pays off here in the third period. What a pretty finish. Perfectly placed shot. Oh,
looks like a guy who scored 50 goals instead of just his second career goal, and it's a humongous one. Levin with the big goal now, 2 0 for Minnesota Duluth with 13 and a half minutes to go. Biondi, the steal. And that looked offside, and it's well detected by the linesman as we hear the whistle. So, Minnesota Duluth, they absorb some pressure from Tech, and then they struck for the second time today. Nickname Sandy. He's got a tough demeanor, but he's just like a big teddy bear, and he's had a lot of success here guiding Minnesota Duluth. Yeah, you know, he's he's gained a lot of, obviously, trust from his players. So when he's hard on them, he knows they know it's with a purpose. And I think, and, and I think, and not say he's softened, but I think he's learned how to, you know, pull back his intensity a little. And I think his players appreciate that. And clearly, it's working, the fact that they've gone to the final four times in a row. Dance his way through there was Ashbrook. Shot of ends up going wide. Nardella, the cross corner dump in. Kataroff there to greet the puck first. But now it's Noah Cates pushing it up the boards for Minnesota Duluth. Nardella creates a turnover. Bouncing puck. Nobody had a clue where it was. Everybody finds their bearings now, and it's Kelly slapping it up the wall. Tech holds in. That's ripped wide. Mosley with the opportunity. Now Trenton Bliss, their shot leader today. Goats, the long pass. Olsen will take it. Dominic James. Nosing around along the boards, but out of the dusk, it's the Huskies at center. That pass ripped back. Trenton Bliss there. Rail begins the breakout for the Bulldogs. Here comes Anderson. Dropping to Roth. A little slap pass back to Anderson. And it's knocked into the protective netting. Albany region upcoming at 6 o'clock, the second game from that region today. 4-3, Minnesota State. Staved off a late comeback attempt from Harvard. Mike Hastings and the crew moving on again this year after they did last year for the first time. Starting to get used to it up there. Scott Sandlin's son plays for Minnesota State too as well. He was watching him pregame, enjoying some coffee today. Eleven and a half minutes to go. Now a two-nothing cushion for the Bulldogs. Fanti, you could hear him make that save. Solid off that blocker. Great move there by Michael Carroll. He's I mentioned him earlier that. Transfer from BC has gotten much more of an opportunity, and he's taken well advantage of it. Nice patience, works it through the stick, gets it on net. fancy has been really good, doesn't give up a rebound. As Ashbrook was waiting on the doorstep. Minnesota failing to clear in their first attempt. Looking for a little room to breathe with the puck now. Cates no. off a stick, so no danger of an icing. These two teams battling no. for an opportunity to fight for a chance to get to the Frozen Four this Saturday. Ryan Fanti, he's uh, kept the shutout streak alive. Yeah, he had that early one you saw. That was in the first couple minutes. Didn't see a lot of pucks. This was a big one. 
Like I said, he was late getting over to the other side. I actually think it benefited him a little bit to kick it out to his right. When he has left a rebound for the taking, the Bulldogs have been there to help him out. Great save there. Gedela, solid play up over 190 minutes or getting close to that in a shutout streak for Ryan Fanti and that a big reason why the Bulldogs are here right now today. Piedela walks in, cranking that wide. Maybe their best look here in the third period. Wyatt Kaiser up the boards. Roth has it. Bouncing puck settled down by Michigan Tech's Piedela. Oh, by the way, his brother's the goaltender. Piedela slides it through the crease, comes back, and it gets through the traffic. And Fanti, a great job to see it into his glove. And we talked about Scott Sandlin a little bit. Of course, he's flirted with NHL jobs and might still sometime in the future. But my favorite quality of him, Cappy, talking to him this week, he's a quietly intense guy. He said, I will never, ever single, single a player out. I thought that was very cool. Yeah, it was very cool. I think he's, he, he also stated if he does need to single a guy, he takes him in a private conversation away from everyone else. So it's not a, a, a bit of targeting, so to speak. And, you know, I think the players appreciate that kind of thing. Like I said earlier, when he does those other things, his players, like he said, he's, he's gained enough credit with them that they believe in everything he's doing as a purpose, has a purpose. Boys. Usually get better results, too, when you don't embarrass somebody for making a mistake. He's a little hot-blooded here with 9.50 to go, Ryan Fanti. Keeping the shutout streak alive, and Minnesota Duluth trying to move on to play Saturday. Here's our NCAA Women's Championship Sweet 16 matchups for Saturday. Number one seeded NC State takes on Notre Dame on ESPN at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. Then the Yukon Huskies square off against Indiana. Both of those games are in the Bridgeport Regional and on ESPN2. The Wichita Regional has Tennessee and Louisville at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, followed by Cinderella, South Dakota, taking on third seeded Michigan. All four games are also available. The ESPN app, and right from the faceoff, Michigan Tech, Ganey getting a look. Now, Ganey helps keep the puck in, works it down low. Fanti, not once but twice. Game saving saves there. And the shutout streak lives on. He'll whip it up the boards. Tech now, another opportunity. Fanti denies it. Mosley with the Opportunity there. A little icing on top comes out to attack that Mosley shot, but what a leg. Back to back. Ryan Fanti is hot as a jalapeno right now. Unbelievable. The goaltender you're seeing from him. You think things are quiet all of a sudden, bang, bang from Tech. And he's there to make those saves. Get a look at these. Great the turnover at the blue line. That backhand, one, two backhands, one from a righty, then Mosley his second, then he gets another opportunity. Mosley here at that backhand, man, he, if he lifts it, he gets it in, but that's a tough play. You know, you're off of a rebound there. You're just trying to get it on there. And a great save with that left leg. Might get a little extra dinner tonight after that save. That second one had NHL written all over it. Lightning quick speed to jut out that pad. Wave off a potential icing, Noah Cates. First on the four check. Joined by Jacques. It's Cates. Wrapped up. He's able to kick it back to the point. Kaiser. Unable to get the shot through. It was blocked. Muffled off of the body of Ashbrook. Duluth leading 2-0. Kaiser. Stubbornly keeps that puck in, but... Finally, it's Tech getting it out. And now a turnover. Piedela walks over the line. It's Ashbrook. Shot changing directions wide off his stick. Kaiser. And the puck is out of play with exactly eight minutes to go in period number three here in Colorado. Trent Bliss trying to get in on that play. Bliss missing his 
partner in crime after this play. Just over three minutes in, the Hobie Baker finalist, Brian Hallen, and it's Wyatt Kaiser from behind. And yeah, you feel for that young man, and you can see his frustration as he leaves the ice. The, no way you want to go out like that. Tough for Michigan Tech. They played a hard game, but they're definitely missing their Hobie Baker finalists as we do come down a stretch here. Zaretsky will pitch it in. Get another Hobie finalist this evening watching University of Denver's Bobby Brink. Trying a little chip there was ladder out, but it was cut off. Wyatt Kaiser. You hear a whistle. Puck out of play. Deflection. I think that's Duluth's game right now. If they see puck possession in their zone, they get their guys stretched out over the red line, just kind of hit them for a redirect, get that puck deep, get the puck out of their zone as often as possible. And then if they do give it up, just kind of work, rely on Mr. 39 back there to make a few saves. I think he's been doing okay with that so far today. He and this Duluth Bulldog team right now are in maybe their best form of the season. Really only won about 50% of their game since Christmas. They just warmed up here at the right time. It was beyond the back checking. Choppy to the head. Winding up. Quinn Olsen gathering speed. Olsen. Is that shot blocked? Floated far ahead. Ashbrook will chase it down. He's got Kaiser right on his tail. That's Wyatt Kaiser out of the scrum. Right onto the tape of Biondi. He'll shoot it in. That's the type of play from number five. Kaiser, elite on his edges, turns away, can escape pressure and find a guy up the middle. Make the breakout a lot easier for his team. Goats moves it up the boards. Ends up in the slot on the stick of Cates. Trying to bring it right back in was Michigan Tech, but it's Cates. Pietala in the Huskies. Getting desperate here, down 2 nothing. Pietala, Huck's been on his stick a lot tonight. This is the part of the game where Duluth really does elevate their game in terms of their defensive play. They know the other team is going to have to start taking chances and higher risks. They know if they stay into their play, they can cause turnovers and make the game simple in the offensive zone. Keep it in the deep. Ooh, that was a penalty, I believe. Gillum was just decked. He was protecting the puck so well. I'd like to get another look at that one. Roth to the boards. He goes with ladder route. Ladder route to the point. Anderson shooting. Pietela the save, and he stops the rebound, too. Bulldogs are buzzing here a little bit. But it's Suretsky skating away for the Huskies. Roth will knock it right back into the zone. Five minutes to go, down 2 nothing. Michigan Tech. Chance taking time now. Biondi picks off the pass. Michiak sparring there for the puck. But it's controlled by Minnesota Duluth. Gallatin smacking it in. Ganey in across the line to Mosley. Putting it wide and it leaves the zone. Kataroff changing directions as Caro gives to Nardella. Nardella the toe drag couldn't get the shot away. Where his body's all around him. Sticks flying everywhere. Centered in front. Trying to get the shot away. It doesn't get through. It does on the rebound. Fanti stops it again. The Fanti show continues here in Colorado. So does shutout hockey. Duluth leads Michigan Tech. 2 0 here late. Back-to-back -back shutouts in the last two games. I don't want to say any more. Calls a jinx, but he's had a pretty good day so far, Ryan Fanti. Focused 
focused young man in the net. I think, I mean, you, you talk about hockey all the time and the confidence you have when your goalie is so locked in like that defensively. Nardella did a great job. What a shift by him. Seven in black and gold, gets up, wins that puck, comes around the net, has centered it, makes another, he gets another chance out front. Fanti makes the save as now we're under four minutes. With four minutes left, Michigan Tech has decided to pull their goalie, go with six attackers down two. I don't blame him. I think this is the right play from Coach Sean. 30-second timeout. Timeout. Minnesota the, the great goaltending that we've seen from Ryan Fanti today. I harken back to a quote from a guy who coached back at Ohio State, I think in the late 60s. The great Harry Neal saying goaltending is 75% of hockey. Unless you don't have it, then it's 100%. <laughs> One of my all-time favorite quotes. He's got a lot of them. That is a good quote. I think that was a good timeout. I don't I don't think they were prepared. The Bulldogs were prepared for a six-on-five attack. Like I said, I think this is a good idea. Coach Sean, you got to This is it, right? You've got nothing to lose. Whether you lose by two or three, you get, get that extra attacker out right now. So Coach Sandlin calls a timeout to kind of just refresh the troops on what they like to do six on five North Dakota Notre Dame six Eastern on ESPNU fighting for an opportunity to play Saturday and then the next stop would be a frozen four that's going to be a great battle tonight a lot of team speed for North Dakota the coaching of Jeff Jackson the structure that Notre Dame plays under the goaltending they have from Matthew Delighted, it's going to be an epic battle of wills, so to speak, in, in Albany tonight. In our matchup, UMass Lowell taking on the University of Denver. As you see, the empty net for Michigan Tech going for broke here with 4.06 to go, down 2 nothing. Roth wins the faceoff. He started the goal scoring in this game. Be appropriate if he ended it. Michigan Tech now attacking Piedela. Unable to work it in deep. Great stick at the blue line. It was Gilling there. Batted that puck out of midair. Just foiled the Tech offense. Good defensive stance causes a potential offside. And they miss the empty net. Rail there going for it. I think that's something the coaches will be a little more okay with with a 2-0 lead. Couple turnovers have been the difference today. Wrong with the goal that might have went off a Caro in front, fooled Piedela, and then the turnover by Go Goats. Tyler Clev with his second career goal, second of the year for the freshman. Give him the two goal lead, and here we stand. Michigan Tech looking for their first goal of the game. Little jam play in front, a lot of bodies there. Squirts loose. Hustling back to hold in his thorn. To Caro. Nardella's in front. Instead, they kick it back to the point. Caro to Thorne, back to Caro. Straight away for Mosley. Now the drive, and Fanti has it wrapped up in his glove. And the Bulldogs doing a good job. I mean, there's a lot of bodies in front of the net but it looked like to me that Banty saw that all the way as the Huskies move it around get it up top that puck was going wide but Banty will take a face off any time there saw it into his glove kind of like a short stop catching a line drive empty net for Michigan Tech under three minutes to go They gain the line. Perrottino, he's now in the shooting position. Down low, they keep trying this jam play. Kataroff is in the midst of it. Puck's still available, apparently. And they Seven guys <laughs> in the slot there. A football game. Diving play to get that puck out. And the play is blown dead here with 2.16 remaining. You see the efforts from both teams and 
really you haven't seen any of that hijinks post whistle. You can tell it's playoff time. Serious business. The Bulldogs doing a really good job in front of their net. Tech is just trying to find any way to creep that puck past Fancy Boy. I don't care how it goes in off of a shin guard or anything as the referees discuss if this puck's going to stay in the zone. It will. The puck was kind of riding on the dasher board right at the bench of the Bulldogs. I think they thought the goalie on the bench might have touched it, so the faceoff will stay in the offensive zone for the Huskies. Nardello will take it. Opposite. James. James goes down to the ground. Tech gets the puck. Should say goes down to the ice. Brett Thorne hammers it down low. Mm, detected by the linesman. That puck had just gone out of play. Rays off of that netting. Just popped in and off. That's why you get the four guys out here. Ashbrook out there with Nardella. Viziak. Mosley, these guys have played a really good game. Mosley's had a couple really good opportunities. Ashbrook wins the faceoff. Carroll plays it down low, took a weird deflection, but right back onto a stick of a tech player, Mishiak. Motors in front, loses it, and it's cleared by Lottero. More time off the clock, minute 50 remaining. with a 2-0 lead. He'll take their icings if it comes to that. Leave the pressure. Take a breath. Refocus. And that is empty. A reminder for Michigan Tech. James wins it, but Tech's got the puck. Trenton Bliss maneuvers it down low. Parentino. Deals it back on the point to Goats. Oh, close call there by Fanti. Minute 35 left. Kataroff bulldozed. That puck is rolling along the boards. James, it looked like he might be able to clear it, and then he got a little break as it caroms off him. And down the ice. 28 saves on the day so far for Ryan Fanti. Guarding that Minnesota Duluth goal. Second effort there by James off his shin pad, so it doesn't go for an icing. Worked in front, but still unable to get the shot away. Thorne now. That's high and wide over the crossbar. 52 seconds to go. And another clear and another icing on its way. Carroll gets back as fast as possible. Every second counts right now. For the Huskies trying to get that one goal to just give them a little, give them a chance for making that one shot, making a one shot game. Carroll speeding back, 49 seconds remaining. And we'll see right now, referee, the timeout sign for the Michigan Tech, Michigan Tech Huskies. See our game next, University of Denver. That's going to be an interesting chess match, that young Denver speed versus the defensive posture from UMass Lowell. And the cool thing that we heard yesterday, every team thinks they're the favorite of the tournament. Well, yeah, we started that with that, and it, it, it didn't blow me away. I just really love the confidence that every team showed in those meetings. They think every one of them thought they were the favorite to win this region, and why wouldn't you? I think that's a mentality you got to come in with. There's no, nobody's playing for second place. It's, sit here and wait and tonight's game will side the other half and who wants to play in that two o'clock matinee mountain time on Saturday afternoon a big difference thanks to him he's the best penalty killer as you is usually the case in hockey the goaltender but they shut down the second best power play in the nation Michigan Tech 0 for 3 today really didn't generate a ton of shots on the power play yeah obviously you know, missing their top rifleman and Ryan Hallinan for all the power plays. You, you hate to just wonder what it, what could have been. Fortunate for him, but we're standing here, 49 seconds left, two nothing Bulldogs. It's been a penalty-free third period here. 45 seconds to go, and that puck just keeps. I feel like we're breaking a record here today <laughs> with pucks going up off the glass too. Most of them are hitting the glass first and yep. going up. It's got a little springboard out of bounds right now. Called inching your way towards the finish line here in Colorado. Duluth 
hoping the score line holds. Still an empty net. Bliss wins the faceoff. Kataroff. Piedela. 32 seconds from a bad angle. That shot's blocked by Cates, and he's been doing a, a lot of good defensive work here late. Looks like the bench might have touched that puck is why we hear that whistle that everybody's a little confused about. Yeah, I was looking up in the air trying to find a floating puck. And into the bench again, so the faceoff will remain in front of Ryan Fanti as Cates puts it up off the glass. Shea's back in the play, but. Michigan Tech, Tech, their net is empty. 18 seconds to go. Jam up of bodies along the near boards. Roth clears it towards the empty net. He's got his second of the day. Minnesota Duluth will see you Saturday. They're moving on. Kobe Roth, the man that started the scoring for the Bulldogs in the first period, finishes it off. Kind of a, I'd say maybe a sand wedge, a 56er. Gets the right bounce back to the left a little bit. Puts it in the empty net. Under 10 seconds to go. You're up two. Why not go for the long shot? He puts it right in the center of the net. And like you said, ends this game. Great effort from the Bulldogs and, of course, their net miner. Kobe Roth, the fifth-year senior, highlighting the scoreboard. Oh, with two goals. Nice in the game. Third straight shutout for Ryan Fanti. Seventh of the season. A shutout streak now. Longer than 205 minutes. And, oh, yeah, Minnesota Duluth. They're going to keep playing hockey. They keep doing what they do in this tournament. A great effort from Michigan Tech, obviously down. A Hobie Baker finalist for the majority of this game, but give the Bulldogs a lot of credit. They got that first goal, played really well with that lead. Like, you, like you've probably said for the last four or five years, the Bulldogs in the NCAA tournament moving on. Good showing by Michigan Tech, just a bad break. Bad penalty early in the game. It usually changes games, and it, and it did today. So the Huskies, their season is over. Minnesota Duluth, they look like they might be poised for another long run. Anytime you have a guy like number 39 playing in nets, you've got a shot. Exciting game today, got goals at the right time. And Mr. Fanti was excellent in nets. Thanks to our excellent ESPN crew, my partner Paul Caponigri. I'm Dan Kelly. Thanks for watching. We got one more to go here from Colorado as we send you back to the studio. Thank you.